Hello again and welcome to another Know Thy Foe video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Jackson Stewart for sending in some awesome pictures of his Steel Legion Hellhounds. These guys are done in the classic Steel Legion colour and I really like some of the fine detail that's been put on these guys with the extra transfers. They look absolutely fantastic. You've done a great job on these guys Jackson thank you very much for sending in these pictures if anyone else has got any cool uh, pictures they would like to share and for me to use on my videos please post them on my Facebook page there will be a link down in the description below and just a sort of friendly reminder it's best to post them on the actual page rather than send them to me in a message it makes it much easier for me to uh, download them without further ado let's get on to today's video now some of you who have your finger on the pulse of the competitive meta may have started hearing murmurings around the latest top tier competitive list which even has space marines running for the hills on the back foot and this is what i believe is going to be this which is going to start doing the rounds and it's in fact going to start defining the meta is the possessed bomb and it's absolutely insane guys and it is a cautionary tale, really, of, um, and I won't get into this too much, but it's a cautionary tale of how if you have too many uh, options, it can be very difficult to balance things. So let's take a look at what, what, what do I mean by that? We can get what, you know, I can get into that a little bit more later on in the video. So the possessed bomb is a fairly simple concept with a quite complicated execution. It's Take a blob of possessed as big as you can and buff them into the stratosphere until they are unbelievably deadly. Um, now, people have been trying to make possessed work since time immemorial, but they've always never quite been able to do it. Uh, but finally, after, after Chapter Approved and Faith and Fury... Um, these guys are in a position now where they are able to destroy anything they come across in the whole of 8th edition. And they are absolutely insane. So there are um, different flavours to this list, of course. Uh, people will always like to tailor it to their, uh, to their specific uh, preferences, their personal preferences. But there is the same basic core to the list. Okay. So you typically take three battalions and the reason you do this is because this list is quite CP hungry. Um, one of those battalions is, is definitely always going to be Nurgle Demons. One of those detachments is always going to be Alpha Legion. And the third one is kind of up for grabs. But the way I saw it when I was doing my research this video, the way I saw it run very successfully was with a word bear detachment okay now the the reason you take that just to start off with the simplest attachment which is the word bear detachment the reason you take that is because they have a strategy which essentially allows you to auto pass a spell even if you fail it you can auto pass it which is really important for things like warp time okay because you can cast that on any chaos unit it doesn't have to be the same legion as you uh, in the Nurgle Demons attachment, you have a couple of uh, spellcasters uh, and you have lots of Nurglings because Nurglings point for point are really difficult to uh, remove. Uh, in the Word Bear detachment, you have some Chaff, some, some basic cultists, and then you have a Demon Prince and another spellcaster. And you also, uh, uh, yep, yeah, that's what you have. And then in the final Alpha Legion detachment, you have, um, you have Lord Arcos. And uh, I believe it is a master of possession. But all this will become, if I haven't got the exact right characters and the right thing, it doesn't matter. It's lots of, the, the key to it is lots of spellcasters with some chaff, like Nurglings and cultists. And then a demon prince, some obliterators, uh, a demon prince for the, uh, for the word bears. And then obliterators and possessed bomb for the third uh, battalion which is the alpha legion now does require a little bit of forge world you need to be you need to be allowed to take forge world to make this work because you need to be able to take lord arcos who's a forge world character 
Duncan. He's very, very important. So, where well, firstly, what you want to look at is how do you buff all? You know, how do you buff these possessed? Because having a massive blob of twenty possessed is a huge point sink. Okay, um, I mean these things are you know, they're, they're a huge point sink, and typically the reason why people haven't run them is because for the points they're not that they're not, not that killy. So, but with all these buffs you can put on them, they just become you know absolutely insane. So what you do is you 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 take the Alpha Legion detachment and you make it so it is the Vigilus Ablaze Demonkin Ritual Ritualist Specialist Detachment. Okay. And from that you uh you take the uh Demonkin Ritualist Warlord trait, so units within six inches do a mortal wound on a wound roll of a six, and also they have a stratagem which gives plus one strength and attack to the uh to the possessed. So that's that's good. So already straight away you've got units which if they do a six they're doing more uh to sixes to wound do mortal wounds, and they've already got loads and loads of attacks. And just to take a look at the possessed stats for a second, um they are weapon skill 3 plus blitz skill 3 plus strength 5 base, which is fantastic. The toughness 4, there are two wounds each. And um, they get D3 attacks in each fight phase. But now with the Vigilus of Blaze detachment for a stratagem, it's D3 plus 1. And makes them plus 1 strength. So now they're strength 6 with D3 plus 1 attacks. And the D3 plus 1 is really important because D3 is very swingy. But D3 plus 1 means your minimum you're going to get is 2 attacks per guy, which is great. You know, it's 40 attacks from 1 squad of 20. It's incredible. Then you take, uh, in the Nurgle attachment, you get plus 1 strength from the Nurgle Herald. Because the Alpha Legion attachment, the possessed have the mark of Nurgle keyword. Which means by them having the, the mark of Nurgle, uh, when they have the mark of Nurgle, they're then able to get all the benefits from the Nurgle Demons attachment. Even though they aren't, because Possessed have the Demon keyword. That's the key thing here. So even though they are Alpha Legion, they have, and they're in a separate attachment, the Possessed, they have the Nurgle keyword, and they have the Demon keyword, which means all the stuff from the other detachment, the Nurgle Demons one, is able to be stacked onto them. So you get plus one strength from being within six inches of the Nurgle Herald. The Nurgle Loci also activates because Unlike Space Marines, where the whole army has to be the same uh, chapter to get the buff, you don't need to do that with Chaos. You can soup it up as much as you want. So the Nurgle, lo so because they've got a pure detached Nurgle Demon tach detachment, they get a bonus, and that is on a six plus to wound the Nur uh, s models within six inches uh, on a six plus to wound do two damage. So that's great. You then add. Uh, Virulent Blessing, which is a psychic power for plus one to wound and on a seven does double damage. So you've got plus one to wound and then on sixes you're doing you're doing double damage again. And then you add Veterans of the Long War for another plus one to wound. So the overall is that's it is a little difficult to track. It is a little difficult to track. But the overall result is that each possessed uh, on fours to wound do two damage because you've got plus two to wound and on fives and sixes do three damage and they've got d3 plus one attacks that's a minimum of two attacks each they're also strength seven with plus two to wound which means they're wounding nearly everything on twos and threes so even knights they're wounding on threes okay now then you add in that the mass then you add on more spells. And the mass of possession has two spells, which allows you to have reroll ones to hit and to wound. But also, which is good, because you'd be, you know, because if you do only get two attacks per guy, you want to make sure that they're hitting and wounding. But they also has a spell which gives them plus one invulnerable save. So because again, possessed are demons, they have a five plus invern, that becomes a four plus invern, which means then because they've got two wounds each. They are difficult to remove. Right, so what we've got there, before I go any further, what we've got there is all the damage output buffs. Okay, you've, the end result is, like I said, you have got strength 7, you've got plus 2 to wound. If you wound on a 4, you do 2 damage. If you wound on a 5 or 6, you do 3 damage. And if you do a 6 to wound, you 
um, do a mortal wound on top of that. So six is to wound a three damage with, with in addition to a mortal wound. Right. Then you also have the ability to get reroll ones to hit into wound. So that's all your offensive output. And now, like I said, we'll start trickling into the D. That's great, but possessed are still only toughness four with a, with a three plus save, and at this point a four plus invun. So they'd be totally easily they'd to, they'd be totally killable. There wouldn't be a big deal. You'd just shoot them to death, right? Easy peasy. Well, this is where the defenses buffs come in. So the four plus invun save is a nice to have, but it's not actually the main way of, of these guys being defensive. What you can do is you can add Miasma of Pestilence to these guys because, again, they are Nurgle, so they are able to benefit from Nurgle buffs, which gives them a minus one to hit. Then you have the Dark Apostle, which gives them, un via one of his prayers, gives them another minus one to hit. And then because they're Alpha Legion, they have another minus one to hit over 12 inches. So these guys are minus three to hit with a four plus invulnerable save. Okay. Now, even at this point, they were they were good, but they weren't like totally. They weren't even now. They weren't totally viable. But this is. But Faith and Fury has really buffed them. Into uh, it's just provided the last few couple of little buffs that really allows them to shine. So Faith and Fury allows you uh, access to an Alpha Legion uh, spell. Uh, not spell. Alpha Legion stratagem, which gives you. Uh, called Conceal, which means you can't be targeted unless you are the nearest uh, visible unit. Okay, so that means even though so they're already minus three to hit, but even if they even if you even if they're out in the open, you can't target them anyway because they they can't be targeted unless they're the closest thing in line of sight. Now that's where the Nurglings come in. Okay, this is this is where the Nurglings come in. So actually no, this is sorry, apologies. This is where Lord Arcos comes in. So Lord Arcos, he, his special thing is he is allowed to infiltrate forward. Okay, he's allowed to forward deploy. And what that means, but he is, but, but Lord Arcos is has is innately minus three to hit, basically, because he's he's minus one to hit naturally. He's minus two because you put him in the Alpha Legion attachment, and then you can take a bonus Warlord trait, which allows him to be another minus one to hit. So he's minus three to hit anyway. So what you do is you put him, you, you forward deploy him. Okay. So he is in front of the possessed. And then you have the uh, possessed are able to do a pre-game move. This is really what allows you to, um, to seal the deal, right? So the, the possessed then get a pre-game move. Of nine inches they move forward nine inches up you know up to lord arcos so you could so you have to shoot lord arcos first but he's minus three to hit and then you have that even if you that even if you do manage to get through lord arcos the possessed behind them a minus three to hit with a four plus invulnerable save okay and lord arcos is always minus three to hit uh, so even if you go second, even if, if you go second and you and you do this ballsy maneuver, you still he's still minus three to hit. But this is this isn't that bad because you might say you might say okay, well what about just targeting Lord Arcos with with automatic hitting weapons? Well this is this is you know or, or something like that. Well this is very this is where this is where the Nurglings come in because the Nurglings could also forward deploy. So what this means is they forward deploy out of line of sight it's always especially if you're playing in top tier tournaments especially if you're thinking itc what have you always got in the middle of the board in every itc game the l-shaped terrain that blocks line of sight and in an itc bottom floor of ruins is always uh, line of sight blocking so you have your nurglings which are up front in front of lord arcos okay in front of lord arcos but out of line of sight which means that you have the way that the character rules work, which is you can't target a character even if he is out in the open, if something that is hidden out of line of sight is closer. Okay, because that's just how it works. So you have to try and target the Nurglings, which are hidden out of line of sight. Even if you even if you manage to do that, so that basically means that basically means Lord Arcos is protected. So you'd have to target the Nurglings first, and then you'd have to try uh, which you can't, you're not going to be able to do unless you've got loads of ignoring line of sight stuff. 
And then you have minus three to hit. Even if you did manage to clear all the nodes, which is very unlikely, then you have minus three to hit on Lord Arcos. And even if, and if you got, and, and even then, you know, you're not going to get through him. And then even if you somehow got through that, you've got to get through the possessed, which are all, you know, if, if you went second, they're minus three to hit as well. And the minus, so they're absolutely insane. But then, but wait, it gets worse. Okay, it gets worse. So on top of that, uh, you what you do is you leave 200 points out of the list. Okay, so you've got all this stuff. You've still got 200 points spare. Okay. And what you do with that 200 points spare is you summon in the contorted epitome. Okay. Which is one of these units that went totally under the radar, but it's a Slanesh unit. Okay. And because it's summoned in, it, it doesn't doesn't do it doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter, you just summon it in. It doesn't it doesn't affect your detachment, sorry. And it has a ability called horrible fascination. If an enemy unit within six inches of any models with this ability is chosen to fall back, your opponent must first roll three d six. The unit can only fall back if the total is less than the highest leadership characteristic in that unit. Well, three d six, the average for that is ten point five, so eleven, ten to eleven. It's very. It has to be less than. It has to be. Less than. It can't be equal to a less than. Which means you've got a very, very low chance of being able to fall back from this thing. So the possessed, you can't stop the possessed. They run up to you, start chopping you to pieces. You try and fall back and this thing will stop you. This thing will stop you. Now it might not be able to stop you turn one because it obviously has to get with the six inches. And it's got to be summoned in. But it will be stopping you every other turn. And then you think, well, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. But guess what? It gets worse. It gets worse. So, with all these things, the massive possessed bomb, all the characters, and the contorted epitome, there is actually still room in the list to take a block, to take a block of three obliterators. So, which have incredible firepower. You make their mark of Sinesh so they can double shoot. And once the possessed are running around the enemy's lines, chopping things to pieces, you then just start playing conceal on the on the obliterators so they can't be targeted because the possessed are going to be all up in the enemy's face. So not, uh, And then you've got a... And the Demon Prince that we mentioned at the very beginning is also pretty nasty. You know, it's a Demon Prince and you can buff it up to get 10 attacks relatively easily. So... Even if... Even the possessed bomb on its own would be difficult to deal with but then on top of that you've got obliterators which are insanely powerful double shooting you know we all know how good obliterators are and then on top of that you've got a demon prince running around which is sh shredding your face which does make a difference because you're going to be putting so much effort into stopping the into well trying to deal with the possessed bomb so it is absolutely insane it is it has it has you know, it, this list has torn through some of the best marine lists out there. It's torn through them. Okay, so what can you do? If anything, what can you do to try and beat this thing? Okay, well, the thing is, it does have a key weakness. It does have a weakness, um, which is that it relies heavily. It's that... It, it's, well, I think the first, which, which is that auto-hitting weapons can counter it. That's the key weakness. The, it, the counter is auto-hitting weapons or auto-hitting things. So, I think it is, I think it would be, I think you've got to kind of accept that you've got a very low chance of stopping, of, of stopping this thing before it gets to you. Okay? You've got a very low chance of stopping this thing before it gets to you. But you can you can what you know so once you sort of you if you, you may be able you may be able to stop it from getting to you, you may be able to kill all those nerglings. You know, if you if you know if you shoot those nerglings as things like a basilisk or wyverns. If anyone can do it, the guard can do it. So 
What, what the way you would, if you were to build to tailor this list to to stop this list, the way you'd have to do it is take something like uh, some wyverns or basilisks or even mortars. Um, things that you, you need to bring a sufficient quantity of ignoring line of sight. Okay, that's what you need to bring a sufficient quantity of ignoring line of sight. Um, to try and blow away those Nurglings. And then when you can blow away those Nurglings, then you've got to try and hit Lord Arcos. Okay. Now, Lord Arcos is going to be minus three to hit. So the thing is, is that you're going to have to hit him with automatic hitting weapons you've got no choice on that so my mind is hellhounds this is why i included this picture for this for today's video my mind is hellhounds flamers okay what you want to counter this is a combination of artillery and flamers as many flamers as you can get your hands on you want every infantry squad to be toting a flamer you want every you want to be taking three hellhounds minimum if not more okay because this list doesn't have great shooting it's got one squad of obliterators apart you know which are going to be you know which are going to be causing you hell but apart from that it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be choppy to pieces in combat so it will be taking damage on overwatch and so anything you can do to boost your overwatch is really important okay now unfortunately mordian's won't help you here too much because even though Mordians get plus one to hit on Overwatch, these, you know, the possessors are still going to have minus one to hit. So Mordians won't help you, unfortunately. In fact, if anything, the regiment to take with these guys is, uh, to beat these guys, is Valhallans. Amazingly, it's going to be Valhallans. Because uh, Valhallans can shoot into combat. Because if this, cause that, cause even if these things you got to understand that you may not be allowed to fall back because of the contorted epitome. You may not be allowed to fall back. So if you can't fall back, you've got to be able to shoot into combat. And the guy, and if you're shooting into combat, remember any ones you get to hit hurt your own guys of Valhalla's. But you're going to be wanting to, um, you're going to be taking flamers. Think of think about this: special weapons called the flamers, veterans with flamers. But realistically, Hellhound. Every infantry squad should have a flamer, and every and you should be taking multiple Hellhounds. Okay, because what you want to do with the Hellhounds is actually almost have them on the front lines. So the so the enemy has to charge. At some point, it's going to have to charge three Hellhounds. Throughout the game, it's going to have to charge three of these things. Maybe not all at once, but it's going to have to charge three of these things at some point. You've got a heavy flamer on that thing. You've got an inferno cannon on that thing. Okay, you just need to open up the tanks. You can take, don't forget you can take Hellhounds in squadrons. Okay, and don't forget Hellhounds are only like 108 points. They're cheap. So what you do is you have a bunch of Hellhounds. If, and Hellhounds explode on four pluses doing mortal wounds. You kind of want them to do that. You're going to want to make these things explode. And yeah, you might take some damage yourself, but you're doing mortal wounds to the possessed because these possessed don't have a feel no pain. That is a key weakness. They don't have a feel no pain. They might have a four plus invun, but flamers are already AP minus one most of the time anyway. They might be minus a million to hit, but you can also hit them. Then that's then that's great. And if you can do mortal wounds to them, that's great. That's what's really important here. You're gonna wanna you're gonna want to have things like special weapon squads up front with triple flamer. You're gonna wanna have flamers, you know, flamers, flamers, flamers. I don't care how I'm not gonna you don't I don't care how you get them into your list, you're gonna want as many flamers as you physically can. Fuck it. Basic Lehman Russ's triple heavy flamer. You know, it just 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 heavy flamer the crap out of them. Flame the crap out of them. Now, you may not be able to fall back, and the possessed may wrap and trap things. So you, like I said, you're gonna need to have the ability to shoot into combat. Okay, so double, you know, so you're gonna want to have things like three special weapon squads with flamers. Okay, and those flamers. Uh, you know, and they, you might want to hide them in like a transport of some kind, like a uh, what do you call it, like a chimera. Jump these guys out, start flaming things. Now, don't forget, as guard, we can mix and match detachments. Okay, so we can do so. What we you know if, if the chaos can soup, we can soup. So, what you might want to have is. A load of Val, you know, Valhallans, backed up by 
Katachan artillery. And you may want, maybe, you know, if you, if you, it, it's, it's kind of, I'm not sure how you play this, but you may want uh, some Katachan to counter some Katachan special weapon squads. Okay. Because what the Katachan special weapon squads would like to do is you could order them to burn them out to, to really maximize the potential of flames or you can just but then you wouldn't be able to shoot to combat with them so i like i said i think val Hallens are actually best because you want to jump you you want to have those special weapons because they're going to be low priority on your on the opponent's list um he's not going to have that much shooting anyway uh and so what you do is you have these three flamer squads and you just you move them forward you do the val Hallen order that lets you shoot into combat and if they've wrapped and trapped and you just flame for days you just flame and you just keep on flaming. Um, so that so but but I did mention mortal wounds as well. These guys, the possessed, cannot uh, they don't ever feel no pain and you can just smite them. Okay. I'm thinking you're gonna want two primary psychers and two astropaths. Okay. The reason you want two Primaire Psychers is you want two fairly reliable sources of smite. Okay, because the first guy, the first one's going to smite on a 5+, plus, second one's going to smite on a 6. Then you want an Astropath who's going to have uh, Psychic Maelstrom. And don't forget, Psychic Maelstrom doesn't have to target the nearest unit, but it can do. It doesn't have to target the nearest unit, so Lord, Ar Lord Arkos, you could Psychic Maelstrom if you wanted to. But let's assume you can't. Uh, or let's assume you're just focusing down the possessed first. So you psychic motion. And then amazingly, you probably want the, the, the second natural path. He's kind of an added one. For gaze of the emperor to do even more mortal wounds. Because that's just draw a line within 12 inches from the psychic. So just draw a line across the middle of the possessed unit. And just do loads of mortal wounds to them. And do not forget one last thing. Is inquisitors. Inquisitors give huge bonuses to fighting chaos. If chaos is in the ascendancy, then you're going to want to take um, uh, an inquisitor. I believe it's Malleus, but I'm, I'm not super familiar with with the inquisitors. But you're going to want to take an inquisitor who will give you loads of um, buffs against chaos. Definitely going to want to do something like that. Um, that and, they, and because you can take a lone inquisitor in your detachment. And not r lose the rest of your buffs. You lose the rest of your regiment traits. That's a good idea. Command squads. Just have a look at one. Command squads. Guess what? Four flames on the command squads. Normally you wouldn't want to waste the veteran's blizzard skill. But you could take a single chimera. And put three command squads inside there. And each one could have four flamers. I think command squads can take a heavy flame. So you could take a heavy flamer. And three regular flamers. You could jump those out. Burn. Now, you might be saying flamers, flamers, flamers are great, but what about anti-tank? Well, that's why I think you want to be looking at your basilisks and your artillery. So what you'd do is you'd have loads, you'd have lots of artillery. You know, you take plenty of basilisks, like six, at the very least three. You're going to want to take, you're going to want to take your standard three basilisks. Um, and they will provide you with some anti-tank. You probably could still get away with taking three tank commanders. And just loading them up, like with a triple heavy flamer and then like a cheap uh, turret as well. Because if you can get those flamers, you can. Don't forget, if you can get your tank commanders within twelve inches, which you should be able to, those um, though the mass one to hit from the alpha legion goes away, so they're only minus two. And don't forget, you could have potentials to deny one of their minus one to hit powers as well. So you could get it to where your tank commanders are hitting, you know, when, when the possessed smash, you could get it where your tank commanders are able to hit, um, are able to uh, hit on fives, fours, fours and fives. Now also don't forget one last thing, one last thing. Okay, don't forget that you could take the Emperor's Fist tank company. And if you know... If 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 the, if the possessed have wrapped and trapped something, and you have used your Valhalla in order to burn away them as many as possible, there's still and you smite as many as possible, but you know that that you, they're gonna they're gonna tie your tanks up next turn. But there's only a few of them left. What you could potentially do 
and it is a desperate maneuver but it is one to keep in the back of your mind is you can use the steel phalanx stratagem and you can put that on the possessed and then every tank that you charge into those possessed on a four plus does d3 mortal wounds and do not forget okay this actually is really important so that's one desperate stratagem way of dealing with them and then you don't forget the vigilance detached from the emperor's wrath uh, artillery company there is a stratagem to halve the enemy's movement that could help but i imagine you know the possessed are going to be up in your face relatively quickly so you might not be able to do anything about that but it's definitely one to have in the bag but don't forget one last thing is the is a bane is bane blades you could take a cheap bane blade and they are cheap now you can get these things for 400 points you can take a cheap bane blade and use crush them because crush them means, means you hit on two plus okay you got nine attacks from a bane blade hitting on a two plus minus one to hit in combat that's the best that the now this is the last thing to say about countering these guys the best that they can get in combat is minus one to hit that is the best they can get so amazingly if you can we've talked about this in a brief video brief video if you can counter charge them you'll actually it's not the worst idea in the world the simplest way you've got all that you you'd want to put flamers and artillery but the simplest way that you can counter these guys is by taking bulgrins amazingly is by taking bulgrins bulgrins are actually the perfect counter to these guys okay because they're they're an eight damage two so when you kit you know when the possessed fails at save it dies they're only ap minus one so they don't care about the possessed having a four plus and vulnerable save because they're only ever going to do ap minus one to them anyway and bulgrins hit on a natural three plus so the minus one to hit in combat means they're only hitting on four plus that's not that bad that's not that bad at all you take uh you take a full bulgrin star nine bulgrin and you just put a single priest with them that's all the buffs you give them don't don't mess about don't muck about that's all you give them you'll already be taking primary psychers and and uh, astral path so you'll have enough psychic buffs to to boost your uh to give you to give your uh bulgrin a plus one save so no problem there and you just charge them in and you've got nine bulgrin which have got four attacks each plus one for the bonnet because you've got three each uh three each plus one for charging so that gives you four attacks plus one for the priest five attacks so nine bulgrin five attacks each is 45 attacks 45 attacks uh you, you're gonna hit with like what 22 of those that's pretty good you get a wound with more than half because your strength seven so you're gonna wound with two thirds of those so let's say 16 15 say 15 so you're gonna win with 15 the possessed are gonna fail seven saves you know be let's be let's be generous possessed they only fail seven you know they could they're gonna fail seven to eight that's seven that's just seven possessed killed that's almost half the blob gone now if you're valhallen and don't forget this list is going to be defining the meta so it's not bad to go if you know if you've got valhallens in your as your counter attack guys you've already hopefully burned plenty of possessed to death there's probably only going to be like there's probably only going to be like 10 left you send the bulgrins in you're going to munch them you're going to absolutely mulch them no problem so you could so, you, so the key the counter to these guys is bulgrins simple and if you're worried about the enemy come drop it and don't forget the enemies are blitz they ain't dropping down turn uh turn two uh, turn one so turn so if, if the enemy gets turn one against you and the possessed come flying up so be it let them crack on and uh you know your counter turn one is welcome to my Valhalla flamers and my bulgrins of which they can go in any kind of, you know my, they can go my cash chance attachment if i wanted them to nice so there you go guys that is how i so you want to have plenty so there's there's you can either overwatch them to death by taking as many flamers and hellhounds as you want you can have plenty of psychic powers to deal with them but to be honest the simplest way and i think bulgrins are going to be become a staple in any 
any list now is is just Bulgans. Just take a big old block of Bulgans because Bulgans are tough enough to absorb all the bullshit from Marines because they're tough as five with a two up three, you know, two up save with plus one to the save and minus one to hit when they've got the buffs off. So the Marines, you know, can't chew through them that easily. Still easily, but not that easily. And then uh, if if, the possess, if you come across a possessed bomb, you just pff, send the Bulgans in. Off you pop. Equals peakles, easy peasy. So there you go, guys. That is my... Now, I say easy peasy. Be under no illusion. Even if you have a list tailored to beat this thing, it's still probably got a fantastic chance of beating you. But uh, it's it gives you a fighting chance. It gives you a fighting chance. You've still got to contend with those blitz. You've still got to contend with that demon prince. But what you've you know what you've got to remember is once the possessor out of the way and you've somehow managed to deal with the obliterators, uh, you know it's there's not that much left in the list. Once you've dealt with the possessed, you pretty if you if you're able to deal them with the possessed relatively okayly. That's how it's not a you know not a word is it? If you're, you know, if you're able to deal with the possessed and not lose your entire army to them. You'll probably have enough to clean up the rest, of, you know, to at least fight the rest of the board, probably. But they, but there you go, guys. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think would be a good way of countering these guys? Um, Crusaders. I'm feeling Crusaders as well. Plenty of power swords. You know, lots of invun saves. You know, if the possessed could, if the possessed could come, wa you know, wailing into a squad of Crusaders, maybe. Yeah. You kind of don't want them to live, though. You kind of want whatever the... What you want is for the possessed to come running in and just to obliterate whatever they touch. Fine. And then you kill them. If they wrap and trap, then you're going to have to resort to sort of Valhalla and Bulgrin tactics. But otherwise, whatever. So, the la I did say I'd come back to this. This is the last thing I want to say. The issue... What, the, what this highlights, though is what I've been talking about since Vigilus dropped, which is the game is becoming ridiculous. And we are starting to see Death Star capabilities coming back. Minus three to hit on a unit which you can't target reeks of 7th edition. And I have said this time and time again. And everyone said I, I was, you know, chicken little. Everyone said I was crying that the sky was falling. But you didn't have this shit twelve months ago. You know, it was only it was only a while ago that people were thinking like three law of discordance was a big deal, or, or this this shit makes knights look tame. I'd rather take on triple four uh, four knights every game. I'd rather take that on than this shit, because knights were just powerful, but they had their counters. You know, but this stuff is, this is just, it's impossible to balance. When when people have, and this is this is why at the beginning of 8th edition Games Workshop says we're going back to one codex. Because it's fucking easy, excuse my language, but it's, it's very easy to balance one codex. When every faction's got one book, it's easy. But, you know, this is taking into account demons, uh, vigilus, uh, and chaos. It's, you know, you've got, th what, three books there? Different, you know, three books with different attachments, special characters, four. Doors. It's an ultimate soup list, and uh, this is this is it, guys. This is what I said. You know, this is only going to become more prevalent. Marines were the beginning. Vig Vigilus was the beginning. Marines. Oh, and don't forget, you've got Faith and Fury. That's four books. Sorry. So you know, Vigilus was when they dipped the toes toes in the water. Then they dropped the Marine Codex. And everyone, you know, and that and that was just obviously broken. And now with Faith and Fury, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And it's a shame. It is a shame. I I wish we could go back in time and that Vigilus was never released. Because that was the point when the game wasn't perfect. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't perfect. But it was it was good there was it just the game just required tweaks that's all it required just required a few tweaks and they were doing those tweaks things were going up a little bit things were coming down a little bit and slowly but surely things were meeting in the middle 
slowly but surely they were getting closer and closer. There was like there was some broken stuff, but it wasn't too bad. It was okay. Now, now though, it's not good. Do you know what? And I say, and I said this time and time again, and I'll say it one more time. This shit makes the the guard nerfs a bad joke. All guard nerfs should be undone, every single one of them. If this is the route that Games Workshop wants to take, where they are buffing things rather than nerfing things, and they want to introduce power creep, that's absolutely fine. If you want to have power creep, that's fine. But take me back when my codex was actually good. Conscripts back to the way they were. Summary execution back to the way it was. Thank you very much. If you give me that, then I don't care what you do. But as it is, you can't keep. You can't. You can't. You can't do this. We've only. You can't do this. Just. Just. It's ridiculous. Anyway, little rant at the end, little bit of salt just to season the whole thing. Hope you guys enjoy this video, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.